Yo, what up guys, it's your boy Kofi, back at it with another video, and boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy, in AK we trust, man, in AK we trust, man, uh, I know I haven't been making too many Bulls videos, you know, lately, but man, guys, it, I told you guys, man, if you're not on the Bulls bandwagon right now, if you're not riding with us, when we were bad, then don't ride with us when we're doing good. But man, the past double days has been so crazy. So, you know, beginning and of uh, the NBA offseason, um, or just even this past season, we know that Lonzo Ball has been interested in coming to the Bulls. But man, I didn't even know he was this interested. So the first off, the first day of NBA offseason. The Bulls sign and trade Lonzo Ball for a four-year, $85 million deal. My gosh. And not only that, they also follow that up a couple days later, but also signing and trading for DeMar DeRozan, uh, doing a sign and trade. And so pretty much our, um, our backcourt is pretty much solidified. Now that we have Zach Levine, Lonzo Ball, Io uh, DeSumo from Illinois, um, Kobe White, we know that's that 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 uh, backcourt is solidified. And now the front court, you know, we got a lot of work to do there. Um, I know we also signed Tony Bradley, but man, this signing of Lonzo Ball and Demar Derozan puts us in playoff contention, if not championship contention. And I'm going to give you reasons why. First off, this past season, we didn't have no facilitator this past season. Um, you know, with Billy Donovan, uh, he was trying to turn Kobe White into a pass-first point guard. But we all know that Kobe White is not a pass first point guard. He's more of a scoring point guard. Let me open this real quick. He's more of a scoring point guard. And at times, you know, with Kobe White, he can get really hot and he can really get he can really get cold at times. And um and even sometimes when Kobe White was playing with Zach Levine, it kind of disrupted Zach Levine's um rhythm because at times, Kobe White, he would just be dribbling the ball, and somebody might be open, or Zach Levine might be open, or um, Nikola Vucevic wants to set up a pick and roll. He may just go around and just chuck up a chuck up the ball for himself, and um, that really kind of stalled our offense. And not only that, Kobe White wasn't a good on ball or off ball defender. Like he wasn't really that good. I mean, not much of our team was good, but at all but him in particular he was not good at all he would uh be missing his defenders he would uh start getting dropped off i'm uh, missing his defenders and it just wouldn't be good now that you have a player in Le Le lonzo ball who's a great um lockdown defender you can lock down he can lock down some of your best players and not only that lonzo ball is a floor general. This guy can set up his players at the perfect time. If you look this past season with the New Orleans Pelicans, you saw that whenever he was on the floor, their offensive net rating went up significantly. And that's because he was so great in the pick and roll. He was so great in setting up um, our players in order to get uh, points. So sometimes when he would drive to the hole, he would set up players in a way that uh, they'll be open to uh, get a, a catch and shoot or um, just sit on um, the line and get that three-point shot. And how does this also help Zach Levine? First off, it takes a little bit more pressure off of him um, in terms of... Um, trying to uh 
trying to kind of do everything on his own, trying to be the only playmaker because you also know that Lonzo Ball is also a great playmaker, as well as DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan, he could score you 20 points per game. And um, Lonzo Ball, I mean, he could set up, he could set up uh, Zach Levine to get alley oops. He could set him up to get um, off ball or on off ball um, shots for him to uh, make those timely shots. And we know that Zach Levine, he's a great three point shooter, and he's also a good catch and sh catch and shoot three point shooter. And so Lonzo Ball, too, whenever they're trying to do like an iso ball or whatever they're trying to do, um, like a um, a three fourths play. A three, four, five play. Um, you can um, set up, set it up in a way where Zach Levine can spot up and shoot, and that will also um, increase his efficiency rating. And and another thing, it's also going to help our, our defense. We saw this past season that you know the Bulls, their net defensive rating was so low. And that was due to the reason because of our backcourt. You know, our backcourt was not good. Shoot, even our front court. You know, Laurie Markkinen, he was soft. He um, just was getting pushed around. And also the fact that, like I said, Kobe White and Zach are not great defenders. They're not really that great defenders. And so sometimes they'll be sagging off. And um, they'll be sagging off their defenders. And at times... That would just ruin the rhythm. Like that would ruin, ruin like you see, like teams go on runs, 10-0 runs, 15-0 runs, and we would always like we would always be playing from behind, and it would it wouldn't be good for the team, you know. And you know, playing from behind, it's never ever great. It's never ever great playing from behind. And I've seen a lot of those games this past season. I've seen a lot of those games like the past four seasons when we were not. When we were, <laughs> when we weren't even really that good, and so with Lonzo Ball, he's gonna um, really uh, help us out in our defensive rating. And secondly, with Lon uh, with uh, Demar Derozan, Demar Derozan, of course, we all know most infamously he's played with the um, the Toronto Raptors, but um, this past season. Um, he played with the Spurs. Let me check out his averages from last season. Give me a sec. DeMar DeRozan. Let's check out his stats. So this past season, he's averaged 21.6 points per game. 6.9, a career high in 6.9 assists. He shot over uh, close to 50%. Um, his three point percentage wasn't that great. He wasn't a good three. Point, he's not really a three point point shooter. We all know that. He's more of a mid range um, slasher. And so we got another twenty point per game scorer, and Demar Derozan. And we saw that um, he played more of the power four, power four position. He thrived more in the power four position. And we know naturally he's more of a shooting guard slash small forward. But this past season. <laughs> He was very, very efficient in um, playing the power forward position, getting those timely rebounds, um, setting like setting up, um, shoot, yeah, even setting up some of his his, his teammates' shots, and um, taking. Um, he's more like, um, how should I say it? Yeah, like he's um, more of a slasher type. A mid-range type guy. He's not more uh, too much of a three-point shooter, and we saw this past season that um, he uh, played more of the role of a facilitator. But most of us know that he's more of like a kind of like an ISO ball guy. He isn't too much of like a passer. But we saw that he was trying to get his his teammates um, to be open, and we know and we know that he's also good at getting to the free throw line. Another problem that we had this past season was getting to the free throw line because, I mean, shoot, you can even blame some of the referees, but this past season, DeMar DeRozan was third behind, I believe, James Harden and Kevin Durant and um, 
drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line. And that's also going to help us um, in terms of, um, of getting points because it's going to allow us to um, get off, give us momentum, especially um, if, it, if we see that uh, a team um, is starting to draw more fouls on some of our all-star players. They're going to um, start to be more... Um, What's the word I'm trying to say? They're going to start to be more modest. They're going to play more honestly. And they're going to be playing um, on their toes. Because now that we, now that we not only have um, Zach Levine, who can average us 28 to 30 points per game per season, and, and uh, not only that, that we have Nik Nikola Vucevic, who can average you at least 20 or 25 points per game and 10 rebounds. Now we have another score in... Um, DeMar DeRozan, not only that, he can also get to the to the free throw line. And that's really going to help our team out. I think this team, I think AK and Mark Eversley did a really great job in um, getting these players. And now, um, what's my predictions in terms of the season? Maybe it's too early to predict, but we got to see how this team gels, you know. I mean, if everything goes well, I think we could be a top five team in the East because I really don't see Philadelphia being too much of a threat now that uh, with questions about Ben Simmons coming back and um, Atlanta Hawks, even though they had a great run this past season, I still don't think that they can match up uh, with the Bulls uh, in terms of um, the type of player players that they have and the type of caliber players that the Bulls have, even though they also resigned... Um, Who's that? Um, um, who's that guy who they just resigned? John um, Atlanta Hawks. <sighs> yeah, they just resigned John Collins. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not on my 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 thing today, but yeah, they just resigned John Collins too. But. I don't really think they're going to be too much of a threat. And Boston, Boston, they didn't play too well. They just got rid of Kemba Walker and um, a couple of their good pieces, uh, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not, I don't know too much about, I haven't been looking too much into it, but um, they got rid of some of their key pieces on that team, especially Kemba Walker. And so, you know, Boston, they're also going to take a step back. Um, the Heat, the Heat actually got better. But I still don't think they're going to stack up to the Bulls. I mean, they could be a threat now they got Kyle Lowry. They could match up really well against us. But I think the Bulls are just slightly more better. I think the only two teams that are, like, really better than us is really the Nets. And, well, specifically in the East are the Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks. But other than that, I, I see us being better than the rest of the teams in the East. And we know how injury prone the Brooklyn Nets is. So the Bulls can be fringe uh, Eastern Conference title contenders. That's all. And that and really, they'll all depend on how well these these guys gel together. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to make that video. And um, man, we got to give it up to, to, to the front, the front office, man. We came a long way. From freaking Gar Packs, man. Those those dog days, them dog day years of freaking Gar Foreman and John Paxson. But man, this is a new era in Bulls basketball. And man, I can't wait, man. I really can't wait because, you know, I, I was I've been really sad about, you know, the Cubs losing um the Cubs losing Anthony Rizzo, uh Javier Baez and Chris Bryant. But that's another story for another day. Y'all already saw my video. Um y'all already saw me um with my whole spiel, but I'm really happy, you know, with the, with the Chicago Bulls because I'm a big Chicago Bulls fan. You know, I've been watching them like crazy for especially these past four years. And now that they're going to be doing well, I'm really going to be watching them. But man, guys, I'm, I'm really happy for this Bulls team. And uh, yeah, man, this is your boy Kofi signing out and stay tuned later on or tomorrow. I don't know what today is. Probably think today is 
Friday. But stay tuned for uh, that podcast with me and Jonah Pitney, where we're going to be talking about the Chicago Bears season. But anyway, guys, uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and yeah, go Bulls. Peace out.